Thank you so much for coming to this pop-up event with me. I'm so happy to be here. Um, just a really quick thing is one of my first jobs in Portland was at the Portland Art Museum. And I worked at the museum cafe and I also did some catering. Um, so it holds a special place in my heart because of that. And then I also every year love Portland Book Festival being here and also um, Portland International Film Festival. So it's just really fun to be here and be paired with this artwork um, that's called Strata. And actually at the Museum Cafe when I worked there, we served Strata, which is just a coincidence, but kind of funny, um, which is like a layered cheese and veggies and sometimes meat kind of tort. But um, this is my book and it just came out. It's called Dumplings Equal Love. And I think, you know, like it's kind of funny to do a reading from a cookbook, but not so much because there are a lot of stories in here and um, as well as recipes. And I think I'm just going to read the introduction and then I will read one of the short one page essays that's about um, cooking dumplings with kids because I love to do that. So without further ado, I was nine or 10 years old the first time I had dumplings. My family was out to dinner at a Chinese restaurant not far from downtown Cincinnati, owned and run by a Chinese family. Our server, the restaurant owner's son, who was in his late teens and always dressed in a fresh pressed immaculate black suit, smiled as he set the dumplings down in the middle of our table. He actually bowed to them. Then with one hand behind his back, he lifted the steamer lid and a plume of savory Chinese chive spiked steam wafted up toward our noses. I knew that food would never be the same for me again. Every time we ate at that restaurant after that first bamboo steamer tray of shumai, and we ate there often, I hoped that our order would include them. It usually did, although sometimes spring rolls won out. When Sasquatch Books asked me to write this cookbook during a meal at the Portland Book Festival in 2018, where we unsurprisingly shared dumplings, this memory and others lit up for me, one after another, like a meteor shower. The vegetarian Chinese su jiao dumplings I learned to make in my early 20s with my friend Raquel. The hundreds of thick-skinned pan-fried dumplings that I ate throughout college at the small just off campus counter service Chinese restaurant. My first steamy platter of buttery potato pierogi at Portland's annual Polish festival. The mind expanding array of beautiful shrimp and pork dumplings I ate as a child while traveling throughout Asia with my travel agent grandma. My first brothy pleated Chinese Shaolong bao that I hunted down in Seattle and was unsure exactly how to eat. Most cultures claim and celebrate some sort of dumpling, regardless of what your definition of dumpling is, and there are many. Historically, dumplings have been small, hand filled, bite sized treats enjoyed morning, noon, and night. They're often made at home and with meager ingredients, and they are usually steeped in regional and familial stories. I sourced many of the traditional and beloved worldwide dumplings in this book directly from friends and loved ones whose families hold these recipes dear and have passed them from generation to generation, such as the Korean pork and kimchi mandu, Japanese gyoza, and sour pickle pierogi. Other recipes were inspired by my family, my travels, and my home kitchen, such as the Cincinnati chili, shrimp and grits, bananas foster, and nettle dumplings. All the dumplings in this cookbook are rooted in deep cultural respect, steeped in my own personal curiosity, and fed by a lot of nose and old cookbooks research. I enjoyed immersing myself in the history and culture of many of the dishes and dumplings in these pages as much as I did in developing the recipes. To me, dumplings equal love no matter what culture they come from or how they are cooked. They are the food that I often crave when I'm under the weather or my head hangs low. And they are the food that I want to cook for loved ones when they're going through a rough spell. I've always carried a torch for hidden foods, the heart of the matter, all steamy, aromatic, and nestled inside, waiting to comfort those who eat them. When you take a tender dumpling skin, fill it with deliciousness, and hand form it, you are ensuring that every bite counts, that every moment matters. 
This cookbook is at once a message of love via dumplings and a celebration of culinary diversity. Dumplings Equal Love includes more than 20 traditional and not so traditional dumpling recipes from around the world. In these pages, you'll find recipes for everything from hearty fist-sized grated potato and barley flour Norwegian kumper and those small delicate Chinese shumai to Pacific Northwest morel dumplings and orange-hued smoky pimenton skins. There are also recipes for everything from dumpling doughs that you can enhance with vibrant, vibrant powdered vegetables, fruits and spices, to versatile dipping sauces and workhorse pantry staples. Mass market industrialized food lies on one end of the spectrum, dumplings decidedly on the other. No two homemade dumplings are ever exactly the same and they're often as strikingly beautiful as they are delicious. I love that internationally, Dumplings have always straddled the dual roles of inexpensive and often familial comfort food, as well as ceremonial, celebratory, festival, and holiday food. Whether dumplings were delivered in a parade of platters at imperial Chinese banquets during China's more than 2,000 years of emperor rule, or filled with healing herbs and boiled up over an outdoor fire to treat frostbite and illness, they have always provided us with regionalism in an ever-globalizing world. Their stories and flavors help us understand ourselves and others. I want to be very clear from page one that store-bought dumpling skins are perfectly acceptable for most dumplings in this book. In fact, they're often my go-to. When you're feeling pulled in too many directions, sad, or just plain out of sorts, popping into the store for a tiny parcel of dumpling skins and then whipping up a small bowl of filling one's home is sometimes all that's needed to get things back on a manageable track. You fill the skins, you form the dumplings, set them in a boiling pot, hot oiled pan, or bamboo steamer, and you know that in less than 15 minutes, everything will feel a whole lot better. Bite after steamy bite. It's a simple way to take sweet care of yourself and loved ones. I can't tell you how often people tell me that they would love to make dumplings from scratch, but it's just too time consuming and tedious. It doesn't have to be, and I'll go so far as to say that in general, it should not be. One of my greatest goals with this book is to help you not just make, but enjoy making dumplings from start to finish, skins and all. I wanna take the strain out of the process to set you up for dumpling making success with advice on sequencing tasks, as well as tips and tools for streamlining everything. If you, like me, often turn to simple kitchen projects to make things right in your world, to either soften its edges or celebrate the small stuff, you'll find a friend in this book. Dumplings don't ask for much. All they require is a series of small tasks, nothing too complicated or technique driven, nothing too particular. When you set into making a batch, the path of least resistance way, the dumplings equal love way, your mind and body ease up a bit as you move into the straightforward tasks of chopping and mincing, seasoning and stirring, forming and cooking, and finally, thank goodness, eating. Dumplings equal love. So that is the introduction to this book of dumplings. And then, so during, um, the beginning of the global pandemic um, when we were doing sheltering in place. Uh, I really uh, wanted to do something fun with my nieces there in Cincinnati. And so we had these cooking sessions via Zoom where it would be, you know, three to four hours and we'd cook all sorts of things. Um, we cook dumplings that were just sort of work with what you have dumplings in the kitchen, different recipes from this book. We also cooked some recipes from the newest Joy of Cooking, and they were a part of the Portland Book Festival last year for that edition. Um, but the, it was just a really fun way for us to be together, to love one another, be creative, and I love making dumplings with kids, so this is about that. Uh, so the title of this is Dumpling Fun for Kids. Including kids in the kitchen from an early age helps them learn the beauty, art, and importance of cooking and eating good food. People often shy away from letting children help because they think kids will either hurt themselves or make a mess. One or both may happen, but you have to start somewhere. I remember being so surprised in college about how many students showed up 
with no clue how to cook for themselves. We can do better. Dumplings are excellent to make with kids because they are tactile and sculptural, and if they get messed up, you can just scrap the skin, keep the filling, and start over. All that's lost is a little time, flour, and water. It's fun for children to express themselves through dumplings, tiny works of art that they get to then eat. And there are loads of tiny tools that kids can muck around with too, that I also love. Tiny tongs, tiny whisks, tiny spatulas, tiny rolling pins, tiny bamboo steamers, etc. Kids can brightly color and boldly flavor their dumpling doughs. And all of these parts have you know, page references for how you do these things. Um, make all sorts of cool patterned or marbled skins and fill them with surprises, like a tiny cube of cheese or a quail egg. Think of Play-Doh fun, only they get to eat their creations when they're done. If I could recommend only one dumpling to type to try with kids, uh, it would be one of the three XLB dumplings, Xiaolong Bao soup dumplings. Magic. For best results, don't micromanage kids in the kitchen. Set them up at a table or give them a step stool. Provide skins and filling or guidance for making both and some simple instructions and then let them get to work on their own. They'll come to you if they have questions. It's a lesson in trust as well as in tenderness, creativity and gentle handiwork. We generally appreciate things that we've made ourselves more than those that are made for us. We understand them better. Dumplings are no different. Sensitive children often shine when it comes to the dumpling way. So that's that. Thank you so much for coming to a reading from a cookbook. It's a funny thing, I realize. Um, and thanks for coming to the Portland Book Festival. I hope that the rest of your festival is wonderful and I will quote unquote see you at some of the events, I hope. Okay, bye.